Hello, I'm Mary Beth Rollin, a speech and language pathologist, and this is about SALT comprehension questions. Just to introduce myself, I've worked for Madison Metropolitan School District as a speech and language pathologist for 35 years, and I also now mentor brand new speech and language clinicians and also do their clinical fellowship year. What were the categories and what were the stories? Well, in the Bloom's categories, there's remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And as you go through that, they get harder. And the stories are the frog, where are you? Pookins gets her way, a porcupine named Fluffy, and Dr. DeSoto. Why use Bloom's taxonomy? Why did we choose that? Well, first of all, it's very widely used in education and it has a simple levels of knowledge and thinking that have been researched. It starts out with factual, then goes to conceptual and procedural and metacognitive. So using it as a framework with each level required more cognitive demand and higher level thinking as the student went up the hierarchy. How did the comprehension questions happen? Well, after using the narrative story retells, we realized that comprehension questions would be really valuable. Often when you'd be in an evaluation on a student, the teachers would mention that the child could decode text, but not answer questions about the text. And they were really uncertain about what kinds of questions they could answer and couldn't. And then reading assessments often use questions to decide a reading level. You get to a certain level of decoding, and then they ask their comprehension questions, and then that's the level you're at. And so if you can decode, but you can't answer the questions, that puts you at a lower reading level. So using Bloom's taxonomy, the MMSD SALT group developed questions in each category for each of the stories. Pilots and revisions, of course, anything you start out doing, you think this will be simple and then it just gets to be going on and on. So first thing we did was we piloted the CQ with students on our caseload, those people that were in the SALT group. We would then revised it using feedback that we got. We then piloted it with all the Madison SLPs to use with their students and they gave us feedback. Then Bloom's taxonomy was revised, so I used the new taxonomy to revise the CQ again. At that point, SALT had an opportunity to work with a researcher from East Carolina University to pilot the CQ with more than 100 frog where are you samples. Although the questions worked really well, more guidance was needed for scoring the answers. The people scoring had a difficult time deciding whether it was a plus or a minus. So when we revised it, Karen Andriaki and Joyelle Deval ran from SALT and I worked along to revise the answer and to change the scoring. At that point, a total of 230 frog where are you samples were then successfully scored using the revised questions and the answers. We decided why stop there and we developed comprehension questions for Spanish and English frog stories for bilingual students. So we use frog, where are you? Frog goes to dinner, frog on his own, and one frog too many. And if you look in the assessing language production using SALT software books, the first appendix has which students you can use which books with. How do you administer? First, choose the story appropriate for your student. After your student's done retelling the story to you, ask the student to answer your questions. Ask them in the order provided on the sheet and record these so you can review them if necessary. Prompts are acceptable, but should be noted. After you get an uh, answer and the student says, I don't know, or just gives you a partial answer, you can say, tell me more. That then becomes a score of one, not two, just to remind you of that. And you could provide more info on a student's thinking or learning style by asking them these questions and to prompt them. If it's heavily prompted, though, remember that'll probably be a zero. How do you score it? Do not penalize a student for the syntax errors. Remember, it's the thinking and the understanding that we are looking for. You assign a score of two, one, or zero. Two for correct and complete answers, no prompts. One for less complete or heavily prompted responses. And zero for unanswered, unrelated, or incorrect responses. There are 36 possible points for each book. 
That's two points times three questions times six categories. Here's an example from the category Remember, which is recalling direct information. And this is from Frog, Where Are You? These are the three questions under Remembering on the scoring sheet. Who's looking for the frog, the boy, and the dog? You have to have both to get a score of two. If they say the boy or the dog, it's a score of one. If they don't know, have an unrelated or wrong answer, it's a zero. What chase the dog? The bees. Other similar insects are a one. And don't know unrelated wrong answer, once again, is a zero. Where did the boy finally find the frog? Behind a log and at a pond or by the water. If he just says behind a log or over a log or at the pond or by the water, that's only a one. Understands the next category. Understanding is explaining ideas or concepts. And this is from the story of Porcupine Named Fluffy. Here are the three questions. Who is the main character? It has to be Fluffy the Porcupine, not Fluffy or Porcupine. Or some kids um, will say Pokey. But anyway, remember, if they don't know it's an unrelated or wrong answer, it's a zero. What does it mean to lay exhausted on the ground? It means to be really tired. Laying on the ground only counts as one. Again, zero is unrelated or wrong answer. What's the main problem of the story? Fluffy's name doesn't match the way he looks. Fluffy's name and Fluffy doesn't like his name are just ones. And once again, the don't know unrelated or wrong answers are zeros. Category, apply. That's using information in another familiar situation. So taking what you know from the book and applying it to a different situation. What does a flower need to grow? The flower needs soil and water and sun. You have to have all three to get a score of two. If you have any two of those, you get a one. Why didn't Pukins like being a flower? Well, she couldn't move, she couldn't have her own way, she was bored, she had to stay in the sun, she was wet. You have to have two of the five listed. A reasonable answer related to the story, it wasn't fun, is a one, or just one of the above ones is a one. How did Pukins help the gnome? She protected him from the rain so he wouldn't lose his magic powers. You need to have both those pieces. If the student says she helped him, that's only a one. Next category, analyze. That's breaking information into parts to explore relationships. So this is from Dr. DeSoto. If the fox's mouth was not glued, what would have happened? The fox might have eaten or bitten Dr. DeSoto and his wife. And a score one, something bad. How is a dentist different from a doctor? Then, and in that, they need to mention both dentist and a doctor with a contrast. For example, a dentist only works on the teeth, and doctors don't work on the teeth, or doctors listen to your heart, and dentists work on your teeth. But if they just say different types of doctors, or they don't do the same thing, that's only a one. Do you think the special formula will prevent further toothaches? So ask that question. If they say no, then say why and get the rationale because it was just glue so the fox couldn't eat the mouse because it was a trick. If they don't answer why and they say no without a rationale, that's a one. But you can prompt and say, can you tell me why? Usually if you ask the first question, get an answer and then ask why, you get a better rationale. Evaluate. This is justifying a decision or the course of action. This is once again, Frog, where are you? How did the boy feel when the deer lifted him up? Well, the boy was surprised, scared, or afraid. He was not mad or angry, but that is an emotion, so you get one point for that. Do you think it's a good idea to keep a frog as a pet? Yes. And then, why or why not? And they will give you their rationale. If they say yes or no, and they say, oh, I don't know, for no rationale, only a one. 
And what's the best pet to have and why? Once again, say, what's the best pet to have? And they can say a dog. Oh, why is that? And then they should give you the rationale and they get a two. If they don't give you any idea of a rationale, like, because I like them, then it's a one. Category, create. Generate new ideas or ways of viewing things is creation. So this is from Porcupine Named Fluffy. What would you do if you had a name that didn't fit you? I would use a nickname. I would ask to be called something else. That's a two. If they say nothing or just accept my name, that would be a one. What would you do if you met someone with a strange name? Ask how they got their name. Say, oh, unique name or say neat name, or say something else nice. Any of those would qualify for a two. Don't say or do anything would be a one. And if they don't know, once again, it's a zero. Why did Fluffy and Hippo become friends? They both had funny names and that made them understand each other. And they both had odd names in common. That's a two, either one of those. They were both animals is only a one. How do you interpret the comprehension questions? First of all, look at the type of question the student can answer. Okay, are they only answering the remember and understand and aren't able to answer any of the higher level questions um, like apply, analyze, evaluate, create? Or are they getting all twos on remember and understand, start falling down getting ones on apply and analyze, getting zeros on evaluate and create? That tells you a lot about that student and their thinking abilities. So share it with the teacher, with the parents and other team members and look for corroborating information. For example, a lot of times teachers will say, yeah, that's exactly right. They can tell you basic facts, but they can't do anything with the information they actually have. They can't apply it to anything, they can't analyze. And you can relate the abilities you're seeing on the comprehension questions to other comprehension measures you may have done with that student. Good thing to remember is that the comprehension questions were not applied to samples in our reference databases for SALT. There's no database comparison available because the comprehension questions came long after all the different SALT databases were established. The other thing to remember is as you're scoring it and interpreting it, a lot of this, as John Miller would say, depends on clinician judgment you know a lot, you've worked with a lot of students, you understand kids and where their thinking is, and so don't hesitate to use your own judgment as well as you can. The other thing I did with these questions was to set goals and therapy based on the answers, and I found that that was a really good way to um, try to move the child into higher level thinking. I would have the Bloom Taxonomy right there and some question stems under each category, and after we'd read something or do a text of one point kind of or another, I would say to them, oh, well, what would happen if, you know, or who do you think? And it caused me to do higher level questioning instead of just the plain remember and understand kind of questions. And you can use the hierarchy with any reading text and therapy to develop comprehension, as I was just talking about. Comprehension question tools that are actually built into SALT 18 at this point, which is really awesome. First, you go to the Edit menu, go to Insert Template, and then down to Comprehension Questions, and it'll insert the scoring template for you. It looks like this. And you type in the scores that your student got on each question. For the first Remember Number 1 question, you type in a one, that's all they got. For the remember number two, they got two points. Remember number three, they got one point. So after you do that, you can go to the analyze menu and comprehension questions, and it'll display the scores and calculate composite score, which remember is a total of 36. Once again, remembering that if you get a score on this of say six, then the student probably needs some work on comprehending questions of different kinds and maybe more work on understanding the text that they're reading and the books. If you get a 34, yeah, I would say that child's pretty good. Once again, you need to use your clinician judgment to come up with how this is because there is no 
database for this. The other thing you could do with this is print it out, use it with a student. You can go back later and link another comprehension question with it. There's a lot of advantages to having it within SALT. So if you need more information, you can always go to www.saltsoftware.com, select Resources, Elicitation Aids, then click on the link for comprehension questions. And to purchase it, once again, they're $5 for 25 sheets per book. Go to www.saltsoftware.com. Thank you, and I hope this has been helpful.